Hello everyone, welcome again to one more video on the Codality lessons. This time we're going to solve another problem of the lesson 5, and it's entitled Minimum Average 2 Slice. It's not an easy problem to guess, especially if it's the first time that you are seeing this type of riddles. So we can start by describing the problem. We are given an array of integers, and the goal is to find the starting position, meaning the index of a slice whose average is minimal. In other words, we have to check each and every possible slice inside of this array, calculate the averages of all the slices, then return the starting index or position of the slice with the minimal average. So here, if we start with the number 4, the first slice is 4 and 2. Then we move to the next slice of three numbers, 4, 2, and 2. Then 4, 2, 2, and 5, and so on, until we have exhausted all the slices starting at this particular position with the number 4. Then we move on to the next starting position, number 2. So you have a slice 2, 2, then 2, 2, 5, 2, 2, 5, 1, and so on. And we keep moving on the starting position and testing all the averages of all the possible slices, always keeping in a variable somewhere the minimal average that we have found and the starting position of the related slice. If we proceed this way, the solution that we have just described uses a brute approach in the sense that we are testing all the possible slices of the array. So you have to have two embedded for loops. And while this solution will give you a correct answer, it's not efficient enough to score 100% on this task. But before we move to the efficient solution, we have to consider two points. First, that this is a problem with a math background. So if it's your first time that you are seeing this type of problems, it is completely normal not to be able to move on to the solution independently, meaning without any help or without any further research. Again, we are talking about those of us who are trying to solve this for the first time and they haven't seen anything similar previously. And the reason I'm underlining this is that for people going through coding interviews, they are given barely 20 to 30 minutes to solve such problems, which I personally don't find very fair because in my opinion, it doesn't really test your algorithm solving skills. But this way you are being tested if you have seen this uh, algorithm before and if you remember how to apply the solution. So don't get frustrated. It's completely normal not to find the most efficient solution on your first try, especially if you are barely given 30 minutes on this. So let's explain one key point that would help us build an efficient algorithm. Consider we are taking the first five elements within a slice and we are going to check their average. Here it's 2.8. Then if you look inside of the slice, you can find, let's call it a subslice or a smaller slice where the average is lower than the one we have found for the bigger slice. Let's take another example. This slice here, 2, 2, 5 and 1 has an average of 2.5 and there's this smaller slice contained within where you have a lower average. Remember that we are trying to find the minimal average slice. So we are interested in the minimal averages here. Then we take another example, 5, 1, 5 and 8. You have an average of 4.75 and then there's this smaller slice here, 5, 1 or even 1, 5 if you prefer this one you have an average of 3, which is also lower than the average of the bigger slice. So in other words, if we continue testing our slices and subslices, we will notice that slices of 4 or more numbers always contain a smaller slice with lower average. And this means that we only have to test slices of 2 or 3 elements. Now this property that we have just explained here, we've seen it in numbers, in numerical examples. However, I don't have the demonstration to generalize this point or to demonstrate why it is uh, this way. And this is why I've described this problem as a mathematics background uh, problem. It's not really about the complex algorithm, it's about finding this key idea that will help you make your algorithm more efficient. Now, if you are convinced enough to apply this property, you would know that in our algorithm, we only have to test slices of two or three elements. We don't have to go beyond the size and this will save our algorithm a big amount of computing time. So for each element, we are going to compute the average of elements AI plus AI plus one plus AI plus two and another average value of a slice of two numbers AI and AI plus one. And then we're going to save the minimum value and the starting index of uh, 
one of these two elements. And we're going to continue looping over all the elements of the array A until the element AI minus two here, which is this number here in this example, because in this average expression, the first one where you have a slice of three elements, we are using the element AI plus two. So we don't want to exceed the size of the array. And this is why we're going to stop our I index at position, let's say size of A minus two. The reason I'm saying this is because our last tested slice in this case is the last three elements. However, uh, there's an edge case. This small slice here of two elements is not tested in our for loops. So when we finish the for loop, we have to test the average of this uh, last slice on its own just to make sure whether it has or it hasn't uh, the smallest average of the array. And basically that's it. We have to return the starting position, meaning the index of the uh, smallest average slice. And now we can go and see how to write the solution in C++ and in Python. So this is our solution in C++. Uh, we can see the solution function. It is provided the array A, it's a vector. And then we should return an integer, which is the starting index of the um, minimum average slice. So first I'm going to define a new variable we're calling it MN. And this is where I will be saving the minimum average value. Uh, for the moment, we're going to put it to the integer maximum value because for now we didn't calculate any averages yet. And then there is the index of the minimum. I call it MI. It's equal to zero as a start. And then we're going to uh, apply our for loop over the size minus two of the A array. So A dot size minus two as a maximum value for the index I. Then for each index i value, starting from zero, we're going to calculate two average values, one for a slice of three elements, ai plus ai plus one plus ai plus two divided by three, and then a second one for a slice of two elements, ai plus ai plus one divided by two. We don't have to go beyond this size of slices for the reasons we've just explained in the algorithm section. Then we're going to replace the MN, the minimum value, by the lowest value between V1 and V2, the two averages what, that we have just uh, calculated, only if one of these values is lower than the current value of MN. So if V1 is lower than uh, the value MN, or V2 is lower than the value of MN, then I'm going to replace MN by the minimum value between V1 and V2. And then I'm going also to keep the current index of the uh, current slice in the variable mi. And we're going to loop over all the elements. Then the edge case, the last slice of two elements needs to be tested also. So if the minimum value is higher than this average, a with index a dot size minus one, meaning the last element, plus before the last element divided by two, then in this case, we have a new minimum average and we have to return the index a dot size minus two so it's the index of before the last element of the array if this condition is not true then we simply return the index that we have found while roaming our array in the for loop notice here that i had to cast uh, our uh, average into a float variable into a float value because by default c plus plus if you are adding and dividing integers among themselves the result will be an integer and you will lose any precision on your uh, calculated average. This will give you a wrong result at the end. So in C++, you have to cast uh, into a float. Also for the starting uh, value of the variable MN, the minimum, I needed to have a very high number as a start. So usually it's the integer max, it's the maximum integer value that we could, uh, that the program or the compiler could handle. And to use this variable, to use this value, you have to include the library C limits. Okay, now let's go and see how we write this in Python. In Python, it looks a bit more elegant. So we start out with our solution function. It takes a list A where we have our provided array. Then I'm going to start by declaring the variable uh, minimum, mn, which is equal to the maximum value of A times two. This is something randomly chosen just to have a high value as a start then the index of the current slice is going to be stored in the variable mi, just like in the C++, mi equal to zero as a start. Then I'm going to apply my for loop for an index i going between zero and the length of a minus two. 
and the minus two is because we're going to use elements a i plus two so we don't want to exceed the size of the list we're going to stop at length of a minus two and we're going to calculate uh, two uh, averages one for a three element slice and another one for a two element slice and then i'm going to test if the current minimum value is higher than v1 or higher than v2 then in this case i'm going to replace the value of the minimum by the minimum value between v1 and v2 and also i will not forget to uh, keep the index i into my variable mi which will be holding the starting position of the minimum average slice then when i'm done with the for loop i'm going to test the last two element slice and here in python you can use the negative indexing a minus one refers to the last element of the list and a minus two is the element that comes before the last element of the list so if the uh, currently obtained minimum average value is still higher than the average value of the last two element slice then i'm going simply to return the index of before the last element then if this condition is not true the program will simply jump to this return value here and we'll return the index of the minimum, the variable mi. Then we get to see this satisfying result here, 100% on the task score uh, for correctness and also for performance. Hope you guys found it helpful. Hope to see you also next time. Don't forget to like and subscribe and happy coding.